Hello friends and family, welcome to episode 4 of our C++ programming tutorials. Today we are going to create our very first program in C++ and we are also going to learn the basic structure of a C++ program. So let's open to our Visual Studio Code and get started. To create a C++ program with Visual Studio Code, first click on File and click on New File and over here you click on select a language so i click select a language and we can see a number of languages here of course you select c plus plus now this is your coding environment and all you have to do is to start writing your code the first line of code you will write is going to be hash include less than io stream greater than I want you to take note of this line here keep this in mind memorize this remember this because this has to be included at the top of every c++ program if you want to code in c++ don't forget this line if you want to write a c++ program don't forget this line if you really want to be a c++ programmer don't forget this line i'll be explaining this line very soon but don't forget it keep it in mind now let's go ahead and save our program go to file and click on save then we will give our program a name let's come here and call our program hello world just type hello world dot cpp and click save so our program has been saved now let's get started I'm going to talk about the very next line after this line. The next line is also important. It is as important as the first line here. Now, watch this. You are going to type using namespace std semicolon. Keep this line in mind as well. If you want to program in C++, all I ask of you is to keep these two lines in mind. The first line is hash include io stream in less than greater than then using namespace std semicolon without it your program is not going to work so just keep it in mind and before you write any code make sure you produce these two lines the next line i'm going to type right here is also extremely important just watch this afterwards i'm going to explain everything so I'm going to type my int main open close parenthesis open curly brackets enter 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 and watch what I'm going to do next I'm going to type return zero semicolon excellent now what I have here on my screen is the very very basic structure of every C++ program I don't just want you to remember the first line and the second keep everything you see here in mind because this is exactly what I wanted to tell you every C++ program is going to have this structure and so it is best to write this first before you start adding more code now let me explain what this means the first line here is all about including the io stream so to include the io stream it is important to write your include this way with a hash and then you put your io stream in less than and greater than now what is the io stream the io stream is something very important in c plus plus the IO stream, first of all, let me tell you what it means. It stands for input output stream. Input output stream. And to explain it in a basic way, I want you to understand that the input output stream or IO stream is a collection of C objects and their definitions. And these C objects must be included in every C program for the objects within the program to function. Without the IO stream, 
certain objects in C++ and certain lines of code will not be recognized as C++. So this is a header file that acts as a library and it contains definitions of C++ objects. For example, we are going to be using the C out and the C in and several other objects. All those objects are defined in this header file called IOStream, input output stream. And so in the input output stream, there are several objects that controls how input gets into your program and how output is produced from your program to users. And all those objects are defined in the IO stream. So just remember that it is extremely important to write this line at the top of your C++ program. Without it, your code, nothing here is going to work. The next line here is talking about using the namespace STD. STD is an abbreviation for standard and this standard is a namespace in C++ that also controls objects like the Cout and the Cin as well. And the STD namespace is also activated within the IO stream. And so when the IO stream is included, we need to tell C++ that we want to use the namespace STD. If we don't declare it over here, then anytime we want to use objects such as the Cout, the Cin, the NL and several objects, we will have to write STD with colon colon before we write our C out. And we are going to use a lot of C out and C in in our programs. So instead of writing STD every single time, it is best to declare it at the top here so that we don't have to write STD every single time, like a thousand times within our program. So just remember, it is important to write the namespace STD. Now let's talk about the int main. The int main is talking about the main function in C++. C++ uses functions to execute code. And there is one function that is declared as a default function, the master function, the main function that C++ runs its code from. And so within your program, you can create other functions, but the main function is compulsory. You need to write the main function and this is how the main function is written. Just write the data type of the function, which is int. Int means integer. So the main function is having an int data type. You open parentheses, close parentheses. Sometimes you provide some arguments and parameters within. Later we'll talk about that, but this is just fine and you just open your curly bracket and the curly bracket will close here. Now the very last line of our main function is return zero and all our codes are going to be in the middle over here. So if we have 10 lines of code, they will come here. If we have 100 lines of code, 1000 lines of code, they will all be written here. The very last line of code that will run in the main function is going to be this one right here that says return zero. Remember, just like several other languages, C++ executes its program from the top to the bottom. And so if it is able to travel from the top to the bottom and it reaches a return zero, this return zero acts like a report to tell the main function that we have reached the end of the line and we are reporting what you place here. As soon as main function receives this report, it tells the program that everything was executed successfully. Because if there's an error in the middle of the code, the program will end without reaching return zero. And so if the program successfully reaches return zero, then it sends that report to main function and tells our main function that we have reached the end. And so main function upon receiving this report knows that everything worked successfully. Without the return zero, main function is not going to receive any report. And so it is best to send this report to the main function. Remember, this is a structure of every C++ program. And so you are supposed to be able to produce these lines out of memory. If it's difficult for you, take some time and memorize everything here. If you like to write on paper, if you like to practice several times, 
do so because without these lines you are not going to be able to write a successful c plus plus program and so keep this in mind all right so in writing our very first program we had to produce these lines and we have and so we are just going to produce one line of code that will display our hello world now to display a message to the console or to the user type c out c out is an object in the std namespace and it means that you are pushing a message to the console so it stands for console out when you write c out it means you are sending a message to the user you are sending a message to the screen for the user to see if we hadn't declared our namespace std we would have written this like this std colon colon c out and anytime we have to use c out we will have to type it this way now we are going to use thousands of c outs in our program and so instead of typing std colon colon c out every single time it is best to declare it at the top here and just ignore the std colon colon and just write your c out also i want you to remember that c out works with less than less than and we'll talk more about the less than less than later but right now you need to understand that anytime you write c out you need to write the less than less than and then you open your quotation marks and put your message in the middle of your quotation marks what message do we want to tell the world before we write our message i want you to understand something every other code we have here apart from this particular line we are working on is compulsory it is standard and must be in every program and so the only line of code we are actually writing now is just this one this is the only code we have actually put in the program every other line of code is part of the skeleton all we have done is just this so keep this in mind apart from the skeleton this is the only line of code we have written now over here we have our c out and less than less than and our quotation marks in the middle of the quotation marks is our message and so what message are you going to send out to the world let me tell you every programmer has a very first message that he sends to the world anytime he is introduced to any programming language and so we are going to send the same message that millions of other programmers send to the world when they get introduced to a programming language do you know what that message is the message is hello world this is a message we are sending to the world and so we put it in our c out less than less than and in our quotation marks hello world so the entire program we have written is just going to produce this message to the world and tell the whole world hello world the first program of every programmer is hello world and so if you have done this you are almost done with your first program the only thing you have left is a semicolon once you add your semicolon here your program is fully ready to be sent to the world what is this semicolon this semicolon is used in c programs to let the compiler know that it has reached the end of a command and so anytime a statement or a command is written the command needs to end with a semicolon keep this in mind in c if you don't produce this semicolon you are actually going to get an error in your code and your program is not going to run so what you see here is a fully functioning program and we are just about to try it out remember to save your program before you run it go to file and click on save once this is done your program is ready to go to the world so let's run our program all you have to do is to move to the top right section of your visual studio code and click on this icon here that says run code when we run the code we are going to see the result in our terminal down here let me go back there and click on run code also we have a keyboard shortcut that says ctrl alt n you can use ctrl alt n 
to run your code in the terminal now let's click and see what happens so we click let's move to the terminal and see what is going on in our terminal our program is loading and we are going to see hello world now we see this hello world here if you can see this hello world it means you have written a program in c plus plus and that program is so successful that program is working and the program has sent a message to the whole world and it says hello world i want to thank you for joining me in this tutorial in my next tutorial we are going to build a calculator and learn how to use variables in c if you like this video click on like share with friends and don't forget to subscribe if you want more tutorials from me thank you once again and i'll see you in the next video bye